Showreels are becoming an ever more important part of being a performer. Your chance to showcase yourself to the industry straight from your spotlight profile. They give casting directors a quick overview of your talents, help them decide if you're suitable for the role and then if they want to bring you in for an audition. In this video, we will show you some tips on how to create your showreel. We will talk about how to acquire the footage from the productions that you have been in, how to choose your best material or create it for yourself, and some direction on how to get it all edited together and online. Our cast for this video will include Holly, who will be playing the part of the actor. Holly was an actor, but gave up her lifelong dream to work at Spotlight. Amy and Vlach, who both don't want to be in the video, will play the part of her friend and her colleague. Joan will play the part of our casting director. And we have Elida playing the part of the showreel editor in a hat. Getting the footage. If you have done professional work, it is preferable to get a copy of your footage directly from the production company rather than buying it on DVD or Blu-ray. It is wise to agree with a production company beforehand about getting hold of a copy of your material for your showreel. Student films and unpaid work should always provide you with a copy. However, again, it is wise to talk to them about this beforehand and keep on pestering afterwards as they quite often forget. If you're about to be on TV, it's best to record the footage from the live TV broadcast as it is very difficult to edit with the footage that's been downloaded from a catch-up service. You need to get yourself a free view receiver with a built-in recorder that can record via a USB stick. On Amazon, simply type in free view recorder and you will find one like this for about £30. Just make sure that it records in H.264 format as you'll find this easiest to work with. If you're not based in the UK, then you can find similar devices that work in the same way in your region. How to choose your best material. Remember that your showreel is for casting directors, not for you and your friends. Therefore, when picking what to use, think about how you want to be best represented. If you have an agent, talk to them about it, as they'll no doubt have some suggestions. When choosing your footage, you don't need to hunt down and look through every single piece of video that you've ever been in, ever. The most important thing is, is that the footage is a good representation of you as a performer now. So, if like Holly, you have a classic episode of Casualty from 1983 on Betamax, it's probably too old to use and won't be of any benefit to the casting director watching. Look for scenes that feature your character heavily and contain close-up shots of you as you don't want the casting director to not know which character you are. Also, the scenes that you pick shouldn't be too long as you don't want it to dominate the reel. It can be difficult if you have loads of material, but we think that the scenes that you pick should be no more than 45 seconds long. If longer, make sure that they can be edited down. Three or four scenes is more than enough for a showreel, but if you have just one or two, that's a good start. Remember, a showreel is something that you build upon and continuously update during your career until you retire. Or die. Or semi-give it all up and come and work at Spotlight like Holly, Flatch, Amy, Elida. Um, there's, there's lots of them. If you haven't got any material for your reel, you can go out and film some for yourself. In our How to Self Tape at Home video, there are some tips on cameras, lights and sound equipment that you may want to get in order to do this. You can shoot on your phone, but it's, it's not really professional and it might just look a bit pants. Alternatively, there are many companies out there that offer this service. Have a look in contacts on spotlight.com, which is location based and will help you find some companies that are close to you. When choosing a company to film your showreel, make sure that you have a look at some of the examples of their work as they can vary massively in quality. It is also wise to ask about how much input you have in the editing of the scenes as you don't want to be stuck with a showreel that you're not entirely happy with. When choosing scenes to film in your showreel, we would recommend not choosing something from a well-known film or TV show as you don't want to be immediately compared with the original cast. Some places offer a service in which they will write something for you or you can write something for yourself, which can be good if you're a writer. Make sure that the scenes that you record are appropriate for your casting bracket and showcase you as opposed to the other performers. Also, it's wise to try and make the scenes as original as possible. A lot of film for showreel scenes are filmed in the same way, but your showreel needs to be unique and suit you. As always, it's good to get other opinions before and after you've done the scenes as your opinion of your casting bracket and what scenes are appropriate for you may not be how everyone else sees you. Editing. Once you've got your scenes, you will need to edit them together. You can either hire the services of a showreel editor or you can do it yourself. 
If you want to do it yourself, you will need some video editing software. If you have a Mac, it will come with iMovie pre-installed, which is fairly easy to use. If you have a PC, you can get Windows Movie Maker from the Microsoft website. Alternatively, if you are slightly more technical, you can download a copy of DaVinci Resolve, which is a piece of professional video editing software. The non-studio version is free to use and it can be downloaded from blackmagicdesign.com. We're not going to do a demonstration on how to use DaVinci, iMovie or Movie Maker in this video, but if you search on YouTube, there are many tutorials that you can watch for free that will show you how to use them. In order to get the footage into the editing software, you will most likely need to convert it. If the footage is on DVD, there is a free application for both Mac and PC that you can download called Handbrake. Simply do a search on Google and it is fairly easy to find. This will rip the footage from the DVD onto your computer. If you have a Blu-ray disc, you will need to get some software called DVD Fab, which is free to use for 30 days as a trial. Go to dvdfab.cn and follow the instructions on screen. Before you start ripping videos from discs, however, you do need to get permission from the copyright holder in order to do so. No, seriously, you do need to get permission. Just because you're in something doesn't necessarily mean that you have the right to use it in your showreel. And uh, ripping discs or even using footage that you don't have permission to use is breaking copyright law and, uh, and we don't endorse that. So uh, yeah, you do need to get permission. If your footage has been sent to you on YouTube, there are many websites that you can use to download the footage from YouTube. Go to www.keepvid.com and paste the YouTube URL into the box. This will allow you to download a video file onto your computer. If the file has been sent to you via Vimeo, there is often a download button underneath the video which you can use. If there is no download button, you will need to contact the person who uploaded it to Vimeo to enable it for download. If your footage is on a catch-up service, such as BBC iPlayer 4 On Demand or ITV Player, then unfortunately you cannot use it due to the copyright restrictions on the footage. You will need to contact the production company and get them to send you a copy that you can use. If your footage is on VHS or video, as it's more commonly known, then it is most likely going to be too old to be in your showreel as VHS ceased manufacturing in 2008, which was a long time ago. If, like Holly, you find it difficult to edit your showreel yourself, then you will need to find a showreel editor. There are loads of showreel editing services available around the UK. We even have one here at Spotlight. Have a look in contacts on spotlight.com and choose one that is suitable for you. Before you start editing, it's a good idea to check with your agent how they want the reel to be edited, as a lot of services will charge for small amendments outside of the initial edit. When going to an editor for a showreel edit, it is especially important to be prepared. Make sure that you know where all of the scenes that you want to use are and make sure that the footage that you have is in a format that they can accept. You don't want to spend your entire edit session scanning through footage trying to find your scenes and also you don't want to find out that the best piece of footage that you have doesn't work. When it comes to ordering the footage, Try and put your best scene first, bearing in mind that it needs to be clear from the start which character you are and what you look like. If none of your footage clearly shows this, you may want to bring up a still image at the beginning of your face to avoid any confusion. We would also recommend having your native accent in the showreel fairly near the start. A lot of performers like to start or end their showreel with a montage of shots of them to various productions set to music. Whereas this may seem like an amazing and jolly way to start your reel, it is completely and utterly pointless and we hear overwhelmingly how much most casting directors do not enjoy watching them. Also, there is no need to put a musical score under your showreel as this can cause copyright issues and can also be distracting and it is also completely unnecessary. All you need is your name at the beginning and that's it. At the end, some people like to have their agent details. We would also recommend against this as when you change agents or if your agent changes their phone number, you may find it quite difficult to change on your reel. Remember, your agent details are all listed on your spotlight page, so it's not really necessary to have them at the end of your showreel as well. Once you've edited your showreel, you have to make sure that it's suitable for upload to the internet. We would recommend that you export it as an MP4 file using the H.264 codec and AAC audio. 
This is the most commonly used video format in the world at the moment and is recommended by all of the video sharing services that are available. Also, try to make sure that it's not too large. A five minute showreel shouldn't really be over 700 megabytes in size, nor should it be too small as the quality will not be very good. There is another guide on our YouTube page that shows you how to convert a video file into an MP4. It is a simple case of opening the file in QuickTime Player, which is free for both Mac and PC, and choosing export. Once you've exported the file, you are ready to upload. And that's it. You've edited your showreel and uploaded it to your Spotlight page. You may also want to take a look at another video on our YouTube channel called Everything You Need to Know About Showreels. It contains a whole heap of advice from the casting directors you'll be in the audition room with. Well worth a watch before embarking on creating your masterpiece. Thank you for watching.